streets There's music everywhere A little old soul beat There's dancing everywhere I would tell the whole world Tell them if I could To add a little song into each life It's finger snapping good Hey everybody, good evening. I'm Carice with 785 Magazine and you are at the 785 and Arts Connect virtual house concert presented to you by Poetry for Personal Power. Happy Saturday, I hope everybody is doing well. Um, so yeah, <sighs> deep breath, right? I don't know about you guys, I just feel like this week is like, <sighs> just exhale, just deep breath. It's Saturday night. We're going to have fun. We're going to listen to some amazing music, amazing artists, all local. Um, Want to thank Alexander Lancaster from Two Wolf Studio for doing a lot of the recording this evening. And um, yeah, without further ado, we're just going to get started. So if you've just joined us for the first time, you can watch this on Facebook Live on Arts Connect uh, Facebook, also on 785's Facebook. You can watch this at 785, all spelled out, dot com. And you can also watch this on your smart TV, on your Roku, your Fire Stick, or um, a box, or what's the other one? Uh, Chromecast. And so you'd go to the Boxcast app and you put it on there and it's all groovy and you can watch it in HD. So without further ado, we have a ton of artists tonight. I took a tour with Zan Pop of the Sabatini Gallery, which just opened. So I've got a little bit of that. Plus we have three artists. So I just want to get right to it. So we are going to start off with Damaris. Um, now Damaris recorded this earlier at Two Wolf Studio located in downtown Topeka and with Alexander. And she is a, she's, she's older in life. She says fourth generation in life. Um, and she actually did not pick up the guitar uh, and really start performing until about 10 years ago, you know, so she was she was later. But throughout her life, she had kept this journal, almost like a songbook, if you will, as a song journal. And, um, you know, as we do with any journals, we, we journal. That's the good, the bad, the sweet, the sassy, the ugly, the satire, the everything, the vulnerable truths, if you will. So she's taken that. She's now creating music, and she is absolutely singing her truth. She is raw. She is fun. She is sensual. Like I said, she is sassy. She is everything. She is amazing. She is a woman who rocks, and I'm very excited to have her on the virtual house concert. So without further ado, Damaris. How's it going? I'm Damaris, and I am thankful to be here at Two of Studio. 
or I jam out with my friends. Yes. So, a lot of storyteller music tonight. This one's going to be about my grandma, who is uh, was a honky tonker, and it's really just about her night out, getting ready, and going out. Mm -hmm. Trash bag, 
ago, I, um, I wrote music for 20 years before I let anybody hear it, and so I'm now letting people hear it. So this one was written alone, like 15 years ago, probably. It's my sad song. It's the first country song I ever wrote. but I didn't forget to turn the light on, so That's now it. it will just get brighter. It's brighter. The sun came out. There we go. Okay. So I'm going, so since you can do the edit or whatever, yeah, then I'll just play I this. I took that part out where I just said that. Okay. Okay, now go. All right. So uh, I, I have another slow song to sing. And I just wrote this one. Just wrote this, like two weeks ago. And I kept hearing a harmonica in it, and so I ordered them. And this is my first time doing this. So I've learned last week how to play harmonica for this song. Awesome. But the future is bright. <laughs> okay, with it. Yeah, I think it's supposed to, I think we're gonna be new friends. Uh, this one's called Then the Cowgirl Rides Away, and it's about a one-night stand and uh, 
uh, a silver tongue fella, I guess I should say, and a girl that uh, leaves, fine, you know. So then the cowgirl rides away.
so glad you're here. That's my time. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yay, that was amazing. Thank you so much, Damaris. Um, to get more information about her, um, to check out her music, to buy some of her music, to see upcoming gigs for her and any of the artists featured tonight and featured in the future, you can go to 785allspelledout.com. It's actually live.785allspelledout.com if you want to go like the direct route there. And we've got artist bio pages for all of the artists that we have featured on this house concert. So I'm Carice with 785 Magazine and I wanna thank you guys for joining us for the 785 and Arts Connect virtual house concert, which comes to you live every Saturday at 9.30. And I wanna give a huge thanks to Alexander Lancaster from Two Wolves Studio and Artist Den who recorded earlier um, Damaris, obviously, that you saw. I like that you didn't cut out some of the things. P.S., if anybody's ever done this, this stuff is hard. Like, it is not easy. Unless your name is, like, <clears throat> Gary Pyland or, you know, some of these other local people that, that just do this stuff amazing. Um, Dave Euler, or Steven Spielberg. I, this, this is so difficult. So, really, kudos. Good job. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you lending the beautiful art space and letting the artists come there and record so that they could be a part of the house concert. Um, if you're just tuning in, there is a little donation button um, you'll see below. If you're on Facebook, you can actually just donate straight on Facebook. And just wanted to bring that out. Um, anything that you feel is appropriate or you can give, you know, between a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, a hundred dollars. I'll figure out if you want to give five hundred dollars. Um, that money goes directly to support the artist. So it helps support the artist about 80 percent and about you know, 20% kind of helps with this stream and, and back end. So all of these performers have obviously lost gigs, multiple gigs over the last six months and will continue to lose some. And so it's our way of being able to not only connect with each other and have art and poetry and music bring us together, but a way that we can support those artists. To date, we have featured, this is our 21st concert, we featured over 50 local musicians, poets, artists, and um, on average, we've been able to pay about $75 per artist. So I wanna give you a big round of applause and I wanna thank you as well. So um, our next artist that we have coming up, um, so I was really hoping actually that we would get an invite to the KC House Concerts, which is this house concert series that books musicians all over the world and um, it's produced by Chris Winsky. So I thought what better way than to have him on our house concert than we could get invited, right? To maybe one of his house concerts. He was down at Two Wolf Studio earlier and recorded and bringing up just the thing about it being difficult, um, there was a few hiccups with the recording. So I spoke with him and he is actually going to be featured Next week, um, with him will be Jasper Shrake Quartet and also some other really amazing performers. So we have done a quick little switcheroo and we want to thank Jacob B. Hodges for jumping in and being, I don't want to say on call, but but being able to, to jump in and be here tonight. So that is who we're going to go to next. And if you're not familiar with Jacob, Jacob is a singer-songwriter. He's been on one of our virtual house concerts Oh, 18 weeks ago or so. Um, but he's a local musician, obviously. And he's a really, he's a champion for local musicians. He has been a part of, started, led multiple jam sessions. He's been in multiple bands. Um, but he is always, you know, lifting up other musicians and helping bring them to the forefront. And so I personally want to thank him for, for doing that. Um, we have two songs, and I did find out that he did a third, which kind of took him over our time tonight. But the third was my favorite, so the third is going to be on next week. So we'll have one more of Jacob then. But without further ado, Jacob Hodge. And this is again live, well, recorded earlier now from Two Wolves Studio in Den, located in downtown Topeka. Thanks for being here. Well, how's it going, 75? Every recording in the, the Sewell studio. Glad to be here again for another one of these uh, online concerts. Um, tonight, 
instead of doing some of my songs, I was going to play um, some songs that kind of were early inspiration for me. And uh, this first one is by an artist called Tony Luca. You definitely look him up. He's um, very Googleable. <laughs> you find out. But this song is called Death of Me. And I remember seeing it when I was just learning how to play guitar. And it was like too hard to play. And years later, I was got better and went back to it. And uh, I was like, man, I bet I could play that. And I and I could. And it was such a a big accomplish, accomplishment to uh, be able to measure that growth. Mm -hmm. one of the first ones 
really calm my ear. And he sat down and taught it to me. And, yeah, so I'd like to play it for the Stevens family. Apparently, um, it was a collaboration amongst the uh,
Yay! I freaking love Jacob Hodge. I just, I love, I love, I love. So, I'm Carice with 785 Magazine. This is the 785 and Arts Connect virtual house concert brought to you every Saturday night at 9.30. I was trying so desperately to get it recorded and I, I wasn't able to, so hopefully I'll be able to share it with you guys maybe towards the end. But it was really cool. WIBW reached out to us this afternoon and um, did Isaac Forrest did a interview with Alexander Lancaster from Two Wolf Studio in downtown and also came here, um, met Garcia, my dog, and myself and did an interview um, helping promote the house concerts. And I thought it'd be kind of cool to pull their stream into our stream to stream to stream and um for some reason, I had it ready to go and it wouldn't let me backtrack on their stream. So um, I think I've recorded it and, and maybe I can share later. But we want to give a big thanks to WIBW for their support always um, of wonderful things that are happening here in town. Thank you for joining. Um, if you're just joining us again, 785 and Arts Connect virtual house concert coming to you every Saturday at 930. I'm Carice, the owner of 785 Magazine. Also want to give a big thanks to Poetry for Personal Power. They have been a huge supporter of these um, events for since the beginning for you know 21 weeks. Masvizi has performed several times. He's the regional director um, of the program as well as they have just helped us support this um, platform and support the artists. One of the things that we ask is that you take an evaluation at the end. So I put a little link into the the code things down there um, for that. Hold on, I'm gonna take a sip. Sorry. Um, in that. So if you guys would take the evaluation at the end, um, what Poetry for Personal Power does, and I'm going to shamelessly plug, because the latest 785 magazine's out, which I'm really excited about, and we have an article, oh, wrong way, um, about Poetry for Personal Power. So you can read that online or pick up an issue and, and learn more about them. Um, but, you know, they kind of ask the question uh, or, or make the statement that, you know, everybody deserves to live in a community where they're able to learn to grow and to be heard. I concur with that. And so what they do is they connect the arts with people that, you know, with, with all of us um, to help build healthier communities, to help us realize that a lot of the things that we might be going through um, emotionally, mentally, our well-being is um, temporary and that we can use those things to be transformative and we can help each other and we can build each other up. Um, Alexander actually, I believe, is uh, one of the featured artists from uh, Poetry for Personal Power as well. So definitely take a look, learn more about them, thank them for their support, pick up your latest 785 magazine and read the wonderful article about them as well as all the other amazing articles that are in there. So uh, thank you again for joining. Um, what we have left for this evening. I'm going to go ahead and do our third performer and then we'll do our tour and a inside look uh, with Zan Pop at the Sabatini Gallery. So our next performer is Reagan Zagan. Um, he's a trans non-binary singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist performer from Topeka. Um, loves to play, has produced many different kinds of music and art um, throughout the years. Currently modeling producing music and performing art in the Kansas City region. Again, you can go to live.785, all spelled out .com, learn more about this particular artist and all the artists featured um, tonight and in the past. Um, pick up their stuff, contact them, all that goodies. So I'm going to go ahead and jump over once again. Um, I think I mentioned it, at, you know, Two Wolf Studio Alexander did a, a house concert takeover, if you will, uh, which I love. So performed earlier at Two Wolf Studio, which is where it was recorded and then now presented to you for the first time. And then after that, um, I'm going to take you on a private tour that I got to take on Tuesday with Zan Pop of the Alice C. T Sabatini Gallery at the Topeka and Shawnee County Public Library. Thanks for being here and enjoy.
Reagan Zagan with Marklin James. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you um, to not only them, but to Jacob B. Hodge and also Damaris for performing uh, this evening. We still have a tour left with Zan Pop at the Sabatini Gallery, but I just wanted to mention that I, I really, I love all three of these artists. Thank you so much, Alexander from Two Wolf Studio, for commandeering, for taking over the house concert tonight. I feel like all three of these artists, you know, not only authentic, but they really do speak their truth. And um, I, I have no doubt that music and art have been transformative for them, have been an outlet, have been a way for them to not only find themselves, but to also tap into um, into that truth and, and be able to express it and share it with others. And so I just want to thank you for, for being vulnerable and for being, you know, entertaining and for just being in general. So um, thank you to Poetry for Personal Power for always being a sponsor of the 785 and Arts Connect virtual house concert brought to you every Saturday night at 9.30 p.m. virtually. Um, this is our 21st show. So I really encourage you to check out when we're done. Go to live.785.com all spelled out or you can go to 785 all spelled out and find it. Um, we have like, uh, I'm not talking very well today. We have artist pages up for every artist that has performed so you can learn more about them. You can buy their music. You can see their own live streams. You know, if they're doing stuff virtually, you can book them. I would love that. Um, you know, support them and learn more about them. You can also make a donation to this show, which helps support the artists that you've seen tonight, in the past, and in the future. And you can learn more about Arts Connect, about 785 Magazine, and also about Poetry for Personal Power. Huge thanks to Alexander from Two Wolf Studio. Of course, it was First Friday Art Walk yesterday. Um, so I don't know what the guy was thinking by taking over today, <laughs> but if you haven't been there, please go check it out. It is an amazing, amazing um, art collective. Um, so obviously featuring, you know, it, it changes. They have some members that have been members for a long time and sometimes look at new members, but they always have an amazing variety of art that you can look at, that can speak to you and that you can purchase and you should purchase. I've purchased some and very happy about it. So uh, without further ado, thank you guys for being here again. I'm Carice with 785 Magazine, and I had the opportunity to meet Zan Pop, which is like the best name ever, by the way, um, and we talk about it in the interview. She gave me a kind of, you know, VIP personal tour of the Alice C. Sabatini Gallery, and it just has been renovated. So the library is celebrating 150 years this year. The gallery has been around, but it has, uh, I think, uh, I can't remember exactly, but I do know that it has one of the oldest collections of art here in Topeka. And they just had some renovations, but they didn't get to have the big balloon and cakes and, you know, hoopla. And so they're just now open, and I wanted to give um, kind of an inside look since it is First Friday weekend. So here is uh, Zan Pop from the library. Enjoy. wash your hands, don't touch anything, don't touch your masks. But we clean the surface after every use, and so we have two of these, we call them Mondo pads. Basically, it's a huge touchscreen uh, tablet slash mm -hmm. computer. Right now, this system lets you play, like you just saw we were doing oils, you can also do watercolors, you can do pencils. But then we still have some good old fashioned kind of, as I call, analog mm -hmm. activities. These are sheets of Flexi, 
And you can use a dry erase marker. Oh. And you can actually, you know, using You've got, and then, you know, so this is, you finish the troll, so using the grid system mm -hmm. to figure out what's missing on the troll. Over here, we have the castle is missing, so you can rebuild. But this idea that, you know, you can use the technology, which is great, but there is something about just that good old-fashioned pen to paper. Right. And because it's really simple, you just clean it off, and then once our patrons are done, we wash them down. So Excellent. we're trying to do the best we can in this COVID time to share the art experiences. Right. right here we'll do hands-on activity, exploration in the arts, the messy, beautiful art creating will happen in here. Uh, because of COVID right now, we're limited to four bodies at a time. But right now, we are doing fish, the flying fish that you see in the window oh, okay. is the activity. It can be done in the space or it can be taken home. So we understand that some parents might not want to be in the space to do the activity, so they can take it home. So we want to make sure that everybody can explore the arts with us. But you'll see it has a great setup for what this new maker space will be for us. Absolutely. We uh, were volunteers for many years. Jerry has been with us for umpteen years, but he's listened to us all the time talk about this future in the gallery where we could actually do art space. We could be wet, we could be messy, we could create for all ages. And we used to have it in a small little office mm -hmm. in the back corner, and this is what we've always thought about. Wonderful windows that punctuate into the space so you can actually see what's happening. A lot of wonderful light. Mm -hmm. um, we actually have different configurations for this space. This lovely glass wall, this box that we're in right now can mm -hmm. become the whole length of the gallery, so it becomes a large rectangle, oh. or if we need it for an exhibit, the whole wall retracts into this compartment, and we gain almost 3,000 square feet of gallery between the two spaces. Wow. So we have about 5, 000, 500 extra square feet with this new remodel. Right. And it opens up. I mean, when you right. come in, you just come in, and the space opens up into this bright, right. airy gallery it no longer feels kind of forbidden. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So we always talk about the Sabatini Gallery being this wonderful jewel in Topeka, but it's almost kind of a, a hidden jewel because when you come to the library, you're thinking about coming for your books or your videos or your programs or your computer use. And you know, the library has always had an art collection, We've always mm -hmm. had this wonderful exhibit space, but now it's even grander. Right. It shows off the collection, it shows off what we want to try to do. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, in the new those are good. COVID, <laughs> gotta have our masks. I like those. Yeah. Well, okay. We wanted to take the summer reading theme, which was all about how to tell a story. This idea of storytelling, and um, the plan was to have four different worlds that you would ex physically explore, like you do for a lot of our exhibits, um, and you would kind of feel like you're under the ocean, or you're in a castle, you're in okay. in a in a mountain. When COVID hit, we had to do a, a quick turnaround and everything went virtual. So we took objects that are in the collection, we turned them into activity pages, mm -hmm. we had story starters, we had how to make books, how to make puppets, finding ways to keep the exhibit with storytelling theme all summer long. So each week a new quest was done. This physical exhibit, since we were able to open on the 19th of August, we took all the objects that we had created quests and stories about that we had thought would be great um, backdrops for some of these environments and put them on display. So you are seeing the physical objects that helped us create our virtual exhibit right. this year. Now, are the virtual um, you know, pieces still on your wonderful website? Yes, ma'am. So they can absolutely, as somebody who just dealt with the first day of school, uh, we can take a field trip uh, yes. and then we can do some things, right? Yes. So, so, as well as all, there's a, there's a carousel of images mm -hmm. across the top of each world of all the objects that we chose. And some of the pieces that didn't make it in the final exhibit are also on display. So yes, as a parent 
or a teacher's aide or mm -hmm. a kid looking to kind of build on their at home schooling this year, there definitely is resources there. I think it all comes down to kind of how we view the arts. Right. Is it's always seen as sometimes as an elective, mm -hmm. as something you do as an afterthought. Um, but you're right, I think that we are all tinkerers, we are all creative types, um, whether it's uh, literary work, musical uh, work, whether it is uh, you just work using your hands to make something, even right. it's making bread. I think it's this idea that we need to get away from this idea that art has a specific meaning and it has to be this this framed piece that goes on a wall and realize that actually art is this creative energy that's inside of you. Mm -hmm. And you and so if you, if you don't use the word art, that's fine. But we're creative beings. The, I mean, we need to communicate. We need to be able to express ourselves. Mm -hmm. And whether it's through ceramics, painting, videography, uh, text, photography, baking, knitting, gardening, sewing, man, gardening, right, painting. Yeah. I mean, it's this idea that we're expressing ourselves and we, and we just need to realize that actually that is an artistic form. Right. Well, and I, I believe, you know, Sarah from Arts Connect and I have said it just over and over again too that, um, you know, even with these, like, when all this hit and we started doing these kind of house concert stuff, it was yeah. like, you know, the arts are what really, I mean, get us through and connect us and, and save us and, um, it's not a lot, in my opinion. No. It's not an elective no, thing. It's, 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 you know, it's not, but but it takes a time like this to get people who are remember. uncomfortable with their creativity or uncomfortable with who don't know how to respond to mm -hmm. art. That that that's this this mindset of like yes, I don't think it's an elective either, but there is this mindset of um, I need to study math, science. Literature, art is an elective. Uh -huh. It's this idea that it's, it's an elective that you can choose to study, and if you don't choose to do it, then therefore you don't have any of the talent. But you do, because you need to understand art to be able to put together a molecule. Right. You need to understand art and patterns to do mathematical fractions. I mean, you need, art is such a, in our bones. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about too, literacy. Your first words, you're not seeing on a page, you're recognizing a shape. It's a chair, a chair isn't spelled C-H-A-R. No, it's, it is a, it's an object. It is literally the chair. chair. Well, and that's like or they the say bowl. you can read these things and you can, uh, you take away letters, right? Yes. And you still comprehend and read it because it is, it's absolutely shapes. It's your you visual know? literacy is right. what we start with. We start with pictures, we start mm -hmm. with shapes, we start with colors, and then we start putting words, numbers, ideas, mm -hmm. and then you get to a red ball can only look one way, it can't look the other way, or a dog must look this way, mm -hmm. not. Then we start to put these, these controlling parentheses around everything. And that's not what the arts, I mean, at a time of global pandemic, how we're expressing ourselves through signs, we're expressing ourselves through masks, we're expressing ourselves through writing, through text, through quotes, through music. We're finding ways to let whatever that energy inside of us is, whether it's positive or negative, come out. Mm -hmm. And that's what the arts is. It's this idea of, putting a, a visual to a feeling. I mean, I, that's what you guys are doing. Yeah, you can, I mean, I mean you, you said it better than I ever could, which is why, you know. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, I mean, I think that that's, and that's why I love having a, a art collection and a museum inside a public library. This is, yeah. Because we are all about taking all of the sciences and arts and smushing them together. Mm -hmm. So all of your literacy is found within this building your your traditional literacy to your visual literacy to your musical literacy i mean mm -hmm. everything's in one house and it's a one-stop shop like we go to target we all get stuck into target right, 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 right. you're not sure why you're there yeah the think of, li of the library like target 
you come in for that one object and, then and you leave the car full. So when you're coming in for that one object, that one book, that one audio, that, that DVD you can't wait to see, take an extra five minutes and swing into the art gallery and see how that kind of changed your day. Yeah, well. this is, I mean, it's very approachable. It's interactive. You guys have, uh, Will you talk a little bit sure. to me real quick, not to switch gears, but yeah. I, I'm looking, so I am familiar with Mary Hunt's yes. These are, and all these from your permanent collection, it's, I believe. Yes, so the library has over 10,000 objects in the, in the collection that right. it has here. And uh, everything on display is the library's permanent collection. Mm -hmm. It's just a small, itty bitty fraction of Right, we have like Apollo Picasso right here, right? We have Aaron Douglas, I was just getting her, I mean, I just noticed I stopped right here because I was drawn and I, I recognized Mary Hunt too, and I'm like, Oh, is this the like who's who wall? I mean, it's, seriously, it, but it keeps going. No, so like, so our library, people forget about this, is that as a card-carrying member of the Topeka and Shawnee County Public Library, you have access to amazing works of art at your fingertips. Now, unlike a book, you can't check it out, but you're welcome to come and look at it online, uh, look at it in the gallery. This Aaron Douglas actually is one of our newest acquisitions. It's beautiful. We acquired it just before COVID hit. Um, and we are really excited to have this. And we thought this is part of our castle. Yeah, uh, it works. And it works quite nicely next to the castle right. as well. Uh, we are, both, unlike a lot of the museums or just a lot of gallery spaces in Topeka, we are open 72 hours a week. Mm. As long as the library's doors are open, you are. we are open. Got it. So of course, that during COVID because we weren't open by Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But now that we are kind of trying to get back to what our world looks like, mm -hmm. we are back up and running. We will be closed for three weeks at the end of September while we prep for the next when exhibit. Switch over. So, or yes. So these walls move. Okay, so like this is literally because I'm in four I'm going to four different worlds. We have I have two weeks to come experience the four worlds yep. in here. We have until September twentieth, well, that Sunday at nine PM to right. come in and experience four separate worlds. When you when we reopen again in uh, October, mm -hmm. the walls will look different, the space will look different, the art will be the staff's artwork, and then we'll have the community in the uh, community exhibit piece of up front. Art. So cool, it's just beautiful. And it really is two separate spaces. And you might also yeah. notice too is that you walk through, you actually have this beautiful archway now. It used yeah. to be that tight doorway. So you can even social distance. Yeah, exactly. And I'm kind of, you know, I love it. Yeah, this is great. And we used a little bit of mix of the folk arts, the three-dimensional art, the 2D art. Uh, what's also different moving forward is that we have a variety of staff in here. So it's not just the gallery staff, it's also the public youth services staff and the public services staff. Everyone getting a chance to kind of explore this new space and realize that, once again, art is for everyone. Right. So let's get everybody in here. Wonderful. I love it. Personal I, question. Yes, ma'am. You have the most fabulous name, and I'm sure you are told this all the time. <laughs> Is this your given name, or did you give it to yourself? Uh, or? <laughs> so actually, no, Zian is my given name. Uh -huh. My parents, um, so I was born, I'm a, I'm a 1976er, so I'm right in the cusp there. Okay. Uh, I was born in uh, backwater bayous of Louisiana. Okay. And so my parents wanted a name that had no gender. So oh. they were not hippie hippies, mm -hmm. but they were on the cusp. They were very liberal thinking. And so um, my father was teaching uh, set design and the play they were designing for was Little Foxes okay. and the main character is Alexandria but her father and her have the nickname of Zan. So Zan is my given name, Rebecca is my family middle name so if I never liked Zan I had a female a, a name, a right. name to uh -huh. fall back on right. and then um, although I've never not liked it. It sucked as a kid because I could never find like you know, like the, like the key the chain or maybe. the shirts or whatever. They, they never had the barrette with my name. None of that stuff. There was no creases, so I, I promise was, you. I gotcha. Like, so for a long time, I would actually, whenever anybody had a, was having a baby, I was like, Zan's available. <laughs> <laughs> you could name your child Zan. <laughs> so no, so, and then Pop is my married name. So that's my husband's. Right. That was my, so that's where I get this kind of superhero name. It is, it is. So it is. I mean, I know I cannot be the only one, but yeah. I love well, there's, there's many that have said that. So. Um, but then we found out uh, that Zan is Sanskrit or ancient or old Persian for woman, 
and it's Etruscan for number one, for the, the, the numeral one. So it is a superhero it's name. It's a superhero. So I said, you know, I feel like you were destined to either be a museum curator or a rock star. Like those were the only two things that you could Since do. Since I right? can't but sing, I guess we got to go. So we had to go here now. No, so it's, um, it, this that's is. That's interesting, yeah. And I think that's the beauty of art too, is that you, is that you have to talk to somebody. Like, right. art is a communication between you and the piece of artwork. The artist always has wonderful things to say, but sometimes I think we get so hung up on what the artist is trying to say, we don't actually look for ourselves and start to dive into what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, still lifes and abstracts, people kind of go, okay, well, I, I see blue and I move on. But the more you sit and look, I actually discovered in this piece, I see a, a face. I see a female face at the bottom down here, a softened, kind of creamy, mm -hmm. brown. Oh. Do you see it? Okay, so what I first noticed, I love abstracts. So yes, I, yeah. when I go right to it, I first, for me, I first see these birds, right? Oh yeah. Okay, kind of up top here, like these flocks and stuff. Oh yeah. But if the female face, if I see where you are, and now I can almost see different, but down here, well, you see that, kind of this, and then over here, here, right? Right here, almost like kind of looking down, you've got this like chin. Oh. Sort of. How do you know? And then if you kind of come up from here to the nose. Yes. You come up, and then you get this kind of abstracted bun. Oh, absolutely. She's fake. Yes. Do you see? She's uh, kind of yes. looking down. And so she's got, she's got birds. She's nesting yeah, her the hair. Right in the hair. hair. Right. But yeah. so it's, once again, it's about this idea it's of beautiful. just taking time to look. Right. Not worrying about what the... Like, yeah, so we, it's important well, to know well, what and then you can see what they say, you know, about it's this. It's so, the shadow between the points of measure, which... So maybe that was the point of I them. You know, was the shadow and the, you know? I don't know, but it's like, I think that sometimes we get so tied into what we're supposed to read and, and, and gather, we forget to look. Right. And then the exploration, I mean, even just the 30 seconds that we took to share with each other what we saw, and we went, oh, and we saw a new perspective, right? And I saw the birds that I hadn't seen until you started walking up, and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I see them. So it's, yeah. once again, art can be a quick experience, or you can take the time to slow down and have a conversation that could only take 30 seconds. That wasn't even 30 seconds. Right, no, probably not. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much oh, for you're taking welcome. the time. I love this. And we will absolutely, everybody needs to come here. They got two weeks, and then they come see the next show. And, of course, um, I'm thrilled to see, you know, the staff here of Kikishan yes. Central Library. And this is, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Zan Pop from the Alice C. Sabatini Gallery and to Topeka Shawnee County Public Library. Nah, I cannot talk today. I want to thank her for taking the time to spend with me. We actually spent like double that time. I know it was a lot. I didn't really spend much time editing it down, but I just thought she had so much wonderful things to say about art and about the connectivity and being that it's first Friday weekend. I thought, why not? Thank you all for being here so much at the 785 and Arts Connect virtual house concert coming to you live every Saturday at 930. We've got another great lineup next week, so you definitely want to check that out. Huge thanks to all of our artists this evening. Um, I want to thank Damaris. I love it. Come sit by my fire. I was going to put the fireplace on, but it's too hot out right now. But you were smoking. It was an amazing, amazing set. Jacob B. B. Hodge. I I freaking love you. You know this. I think you're absolutely amazing. And I am a new raving fan of Reagan and also Marklin James, who performed together. Awesome job. Thank you, Poetry for Personal Power, for being a sponsor of these shows. Please take a moment to take this like evaluation. Um, there's a link. It only takes 30 seconds, but it helps get funding to Poetry for Personal Power, which helps also kind of fund events like this. An enormous thanks to my dear friend, Alexander Lancaster from Two Wolf Studio Artist Den in downtown Topeka. You all are amazing. Check on your people, stay safe, have some humor. And I'm gonna end the evening with an artist, another artist who performed at Two Wolves, the amazing Nate Dingham. 
and Damaris and Nate have performed together. See, everything's just all one big circle. Um, but I absolutely love this song. It's absolutely fitting. I'm stuck here inside. Uh, have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much, loves. Here 